My name is Andrew Flack, and I'm the co-creator and librettist of Fowler and Flack's comic opera, Behold the Man. And I'd like to tell you the story of how this project came to be. In August 2012, I'm in Denver, Colorado, reading online about a woman in Borja, Spain, who's taken it upon herself to go into her church and restore a badly deteriorated and long forgotten fresco of Jesus. Her restoration hasn't gone well. <laughs> it hasn't gone well at all. In fact, when it's discovered, she's made to stop. But by then it's too late. The image has gone viral. These countless memes flying and ricocheting all over the globe. When I see a photograph of the restorer, my heart goes out to her. Her name is Cecilia Jimenez, and she's stricken, she's devastated, she's just horrified by what she's done to this fresco that she loves so much. So I call my composer friend, Paul Fowler, who's been asking me to come up with an idea for a comic opera. I say, Paul, this is it. A woman in Spain is demonized for attempting to restore a fresco of Jesus. But wait, there's more. It becomes a tourist attraction, saving the economy of the struggling town. Paul says, okay, <laughs> we begin. People from all over the world know this story. Well, it started off being big right away. It right? did. I mean, it hit, it hit the internet by storm. It was like, uh, you know, fresco ruined, right. hits the media, and then Reddit picks it up. Stories continue to appear online. You've probably read some of them. It becomes an internet sensation. Fan clubs spring up. People march in the streets. Saturday Night Live does a sketch on their weekend update. It's here to explain is the artist herself, Cecilia Jimenez. <laughs> these memes, these crazy, crazy memes, fly all over the world. Absolutely beautiful. And we approach the story with a kind of reverence, but also a massive dose of surreal humor. The stereotype of opera is that it is only a serious, overly raw emotional art form, which also means it's great for comedy. As a person who's worked in opera, in jazz, in pop, in new age music, in theater, my love of the music is way beyond my intellectual need for it to be superior or something. And so yeah, I'm really fascinated by bringing art forms to people who wouldn't otherwise experience them. And the goal with this piece for me in writing this piece was to make something that you know, a local opera company, a college, a university could perform effectively and still really draw a large audience because the subject matter is so rich and current and exciting and funny. By the summer of 2014, Paul and I have finished the first act and we're in Boulder, Colorado, posting our first staged reading of Act One. Paul is conducting. The audience is laughing. The audience is laughing a lot. That September, my wife and I traveled to Borja to meet Cecilia, and she is gracious and filled with the light of God. <laughs> Upon our return home, her family writes to say that they're honored we found inspiration in her story, and they give us full permission to proceed with the project. La opera. Una ópera. Sí. Han hecho la ópera. Ay, la quiero echar en Borja. We really are kicking this musical theater feel and this opera feel and this sort of theater play with music feel and all of this stuff is in the mix right now. So this is our chance to really, really explore what audiences would be interested in opera that aren't necessarily tied into opera. questions people always ask me when I tell them we're writing an opera is, is it going to be in English? And it's always the question, like, like opera isn't in English. 
for some reason, people don't think opera's ever in English. It's cool now to say, oh no, it's in Spanish, and it's in English. Managed today by my step-great-granddaughter, Sylvia, a lovely girl when you get to know her, and you should. And my last December, my wife and I have returned home from our second trip to see Cecilia. It was also during this trip that Borja's mayor called a press conference to announce the town's interest in producing the world premiere of Opera del Eche Homo. You know, my dream is that we get, we get a lot of productions because I think it's a game changer for what, what operatic entertainment could be. Now, in June of 2016, as we launch this campaign, rehearsals are underway in Borja for a concert version this summer. It's true, we're going back, and this time to see our story and music live on stage. This is happening. Can you believe it? Past three and a half years, Paul and I have been unpaid collaborators, funding the entire project out of pocket. We've paid our singers, who have performed in our staged readings. We've paid a director. We've paid for the venues where we've performed. We've paid to record audio demos. We've paid the sound engineers. But now we have needs that exceed our resources. There are orchestrations to finish. There are translators to pay. There are audio demos to record. There are more videos to shoot and edit. There are marketing and travel arrangements to be made and scores to be engraved and copied. You know, it's a hard thing for me to ask for help. In this case, I'm asking for help with bringing this piece and all of our excitement about this piece to our world, to our community, to our friends, to our people who, who love this art form of opera and who love contemporary stories. If you value musical theater, if you value art that's accessible and wildly entertaining, if you value cultural exchange that drives economic development through the arts, we ask for your support. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's so helpful to have your support and to have your voice in our peace. And I can't wait to see what we do.